In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of the differential rate law, talk about its various pieces, and see how we can apply rate laws to infer how concentration affects reaction rate, which is a general theme of the idea of the rate law. It captures how reactant concentrations affect the reaction rate. And to introduce this idea, I want to go back to an observation that we made way back when we introduced the concept of reaction rate. The fact that rate can vary with reactant concentration. So here, for example, if we look at the first row of this table, the rate is highest when the concentration of H2O2 is greatest. And as that concentration of H2O2 decreases, the rate decreases. And mathematically, if you think through this, the dependence is actually pretty straightforward. If we cut the concentration of H2O2 in half from 1 to 0.5, the rate gets cut in half. So there appears to be a pretty straightforward linear dependence of the reaction rate on the concentration of H2O2. This is an example of what we'll call first order kinetics or first order behavior. And it's one of three possible kinetic orders that are most important to us in this video. So what exactly we mean by kinetic order, how the rate law helps us sort through all this and all that good stuff is the subject of this video. Let's begin by defining the rate law or differential rate law. The differential rate law relates the instantaneous standard rate, we defined that in a previous video, to the concentrations of the reactants. And each concentration may be raised to a power or an exponent called its order. This is also called the kinetic order, order of reaction. Order is really the word you want to key in on there. So let's consider a hypothetical reaction. Little a molecules of A react with little b molecules of B to form products. And the products here are actually irrelevant, which is an important conceptual point for kinetics. The differential rate law for this reaction can be written in general as rate is equal to a proportionality constant called K times the concentration of A raised to the power M times the concentration of B raised to the power N. And these exponents N and N are the kinetic orders. N is called the order of A because it's the exponent on the concentration of A, and N is the order of B because it's, a, it's the exponent on the concentration of B. Now the units don't quite work out here. If you think back to the units of rate are, for example, a concentration per time, time doesn't show up on the right-hand side in either of these concentration terms, and that's where the proportionality constant comes in. This little k proportionality constant is known as the rate constant. We'll have a lot more to say about the rate constant after we talk about orders in a little more detail. We can also talk about the overall order of reaction as the sum of all the kinetic orders of all the reactants. So here, m plus n is the overall order. We can talk about overall order for any number of reactants, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We just add up all the individual kinetic orders to find the overall kinetic order of the reaction. In practice, kinetic orders can have any value, decimal, whole number, positive, or negative. But the most important values for all our purposes will be positive integers, specifically the positive integers 0, 1, or 2. And what I want to do on this slide is look at some examples of possible kinetic orders in a differential rate law and talk about how we can infer the impact of concentration on reaction rate from the rate law. And let's start with the interesting case of zero order, which is absolutely a possibility. Zero order in a reactant means the exponent on that concentration term is zero. This means that the rate is equal to k times the concentration of, let's just call it a, to the zero power, or rate is equal to k. Conceptually, this means the rate does not depend on the concentration of a. Now let's think about what happens if we change the concentration of A. How will the rate be affected? Well, we just said it, right? The rate doesn't depend on the concentration of A. This means that doubling the concentration of A will cause no change in rate. We'll talk about the mechanistic basis of zero-order kinetics in a future video. It may seem strange for now that a reactant may not affect the reaction rate, but with a little more understanding of reaction mechanisms, we'll be able to understand this in detail. Now let's consider a first order reaction. For example, a reaction that is first order in hydrogen peroxide. Well, in that case, the rate is equal to K times the concentration of H2O2. The exponent on the H2O2 concentration term is one. What's gonna happen if we double the concentration of H2O2? Well, 
If we follow through the math, doubling the H2O2 concentration is going to cause a doubling of the rate. And in fact, we saw this at the start of this video. And doubling the H2O2 concentration, say from 0.5 to 1, the reaction rate doubles. And likewise, cutting that concentration in half, or when that concentration is cut in half, as the reaction proceeds, the reaction rate decreases by half. Let's now consider a second order case. For example, the second order reaction of butadiene, or C4H6. In this case, the rate is equal to K times the concentration of C4H6 to the second power, or squared. What happens here if we double the concentration of C4H6 in this reaction? Well, now, since the concentration term is squared in the rate law, the rate will quadruple or increase by four times, two squared. In this final bullet point, we're considering a reaction that is first order in H plus and first order in OH minus. So the individual exponents on H plus and OH minus concentration terms are one, but the overall order of the reaction is two, one plus one. What happens if I double the concentration of H plus or OH minus? Well, each of those individual kinetic orders is one. So doubling either of those will result in a doubling of the rate. As an exercise for you, consider what happens if we double both the concentrations of H plus and OH minus. How will the reaction rate change in that case? What if we double one of the concentrations but cut the other one in half at the same time? How will the reaction rate be affected? In this practice problem, we're asked to consider some experimental information about the reaction of nitrogen dioxide with carbon monoxide and to write the rate law for the reaction based on the information given. So a balanced chemical equation is given and we're asked for the rate law. Now, the basic skeleton of any differential rate law has a form like this. Rate is equal to K, the rate constant, times the concentrations of each of the reactants raised to some power. And we don't know those powers yet, but we're going to extract those from the information in the problem to solve this problem. So to start, let's notice that the question statement mentions that the reaction is second order in NO2. This means that we can add the exponent two to the NO2 concentration term straight away. The problem statement also says that the reaction is zero order in CO. And this means that we can add the exponent zero to the concentration of CO term here. Now, a number raised to the zero power is simply one. So we can rewrite this right-hand side of the equation as K, the rate constant, times the concentration of NO squared. CO concentration doesn't appear at all, and the reaction rate is independent of the CO concentration. It's that simple. We've solved the problem based on the information given. Pretty straightforward. But a lingering question we have here is, how are these kinetic orders determined in the first place? How are they measured? We're going to talk about that and one experimental approach to that in the next video. A point that I will return to later is that these exponents are not simply the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And this problem is a good example of that. The coefficients on each reactant are one, but the kinetic orders are two and zero. They don't match. There are mechanistic reasons for that, and the important point for us now is that kinetic orders have to be measured experimentally. We'll talk about the method of initial rates, one approach for doing this, in the next video.